I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about responsive design, rich content editing, Git and GitHub, Nick's lack of a faux hawk, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a knowledge hub for responsive web design. Now, if you're not familiar with responsive web design, just start back at episode one of the Treehouse Show and watch all the way up to uh, this episode, and you'll get a little bit of an idea. Maybe start at episode 10. Those, those first few were a little rough around the edges. That's probably good advice. Uh, but basically, responsive web design is just a technique that allows you to take a single code base and make it work for multiple screen resolutions, desktops, tablets, iPhones, iPads. Other phones. Smartwatches. All that sort of stuff. Uh, but there's a lot to know, and so the Knowledge Hub for Responsive Web Design uh, attempts to organize it all. Uh, so this is pretty cool. There's a couple definitions, and by a couple I mean just one. What is Responsive Web Design? Boom. Uh, there's a couple of examples and inspiration, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Responsive Design Galleries, look at that. Isn't that Pinteresting? Uh, we're going to click on Core Concepts here. Uh, Tutorials and tools, responsive design tutorials. Wow, look at that big long list. Uh, right there is the Beginner's Guide to Responsive Web Design, which is an article that you can find on the Treehouse blog. Look wow. at that. We've come full circle. Wow, how about that? But uh, it's it's really a, a pretty cool resource. Uh, lots of cool stuff to check out there, so be sure to take a look. Yeah, we you know we talk about a lot of responsive web design on this show, so it's nice to have that packaged up as a, as a good resource for people. Definitely. Next up, we have a project called Sir Trevor. Sir Trevor is a rich content editor for the web, uh, and it's actually pretty cool. So let's take a look at how it works. So you can see if we uh, see an example here, it says, oh, hello, I'm Sir Trevor. Create some new blocks and see what I can do. Well, that's not very interesting, is it? Well, it looks like I can type text right in here. Look at that. And then Sir Trevor edits it. Now, if you uh, have some text here, you can actually make it bold, italicize, make it a, a link, or, or something like that. Now, what's really interesting about this is you can add more text areas, you can add lists, videos, block quotes, tons of, tons of different things. You can reorder the different uh, text areas on here, and you can also embed YouTube videos, delete these things, all that. Yeah, okay, get that out of there. So, let's go back up here and see a little bit about how it works. To install Sir Trevor, it's really, really easy. Just use uh, Bower, uh, include it right on there, initialize it. All you need to do is give it this class name to initialize it, and then this will turn that into a new script. So once you set this up, the output is actually stored in JSON. So really, really easy to use. Just give this little data key right here, uh, tells the type it is, and then what is actually going on inside. Now, as you might expect from any project we cover here on the show, it's very, very easy to use, and there's tons of different options to extend it. So if you need to allow your users to edit rich content on your site, I recommend checking out Sir Trevor. Very cool stuff. Well, JSON is my absolute favorite data format. Oh, stop it, you. Uh, next up is CSS3 icons. Uh, I don't know why they're calling them CSS3 icons, because there's actually 200 of them, and they're still counting. There's more than three. Uh, if you look here, you can go ahead and click on each one of these icons. I think and it's it, re referring to the version of CSS that they're using. Oh, oh, that makes more sense. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Jason. No problem. I wouldn't have known that otherwise. Got your back. Uh, if you click on each one of these icons, it will show you how to recreate them in CSS and HTML. For each one of these, they're uh, using no more than two span tags, uh, which I think is what it says somewhere down here. Um, you can go ahead and take a look at that. But in this example, it looks like they're just using one span tag, so that's cool. Uh, why would you want to do this? Well, it uh, allows you to load up these icons a little bit faster in some cases and also potentially reduce HTTP requests because you're only loading up CSS and HTML. So that's pretty cool. They have quite a few of them here. You can go ahead and browse the gallery and use 
whatever ones are suitable for your project. I like a lot of these. One thing to keep in mind is that browser compatibility is a little bit rough for Internet Explorer. They do give you browser compatibility <laughs> for each individual uh, individual icon, but for many of them, it only supports uh, IE9 and up, which is the latest version of Internet Explorer. A lot of people are still using Internet Explorer 8, and there's even some people still on 7, so that is something to be aware of. But pretty cool icons. Definitely be sure to check those out. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, you know, I like the walkthrough that you can actually see how they're made. Yep. Uh, next up, we have a really nice list of Git and GitHub resources put together by Kevin Suttle. This is going to take you all the way from a novice Git user uh, all the way to an advanced user. Um, so really, really good walkthroughs from the simple guide to Git, uh, thinking like a Git and learning Git branching. Um, there's uh, a nice video on the site, a little walkthrough about how to deploy with Git and GitHub, as well as a little roundup, uh, roundup of books, ebooks, articles, and some different tools. Now, um, this kind of goes really nicely with the Git Foundations course Treehouse recently released. So we'll have a link to both of those in the show notes, which you can check out at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes at the Treehouse Show. Pretty awesome. Well, next up, we're going to learn how to make squircles like <laughs> you find in iOS 7 using CSS3. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck is a squircle? At it's least a, that was my first question. It's a Pokemon, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no. It's really hard to keep a straight face while <laughs> saying that. A, a squircle is uh, a mix between a square and a circle. So uh, one thing that you might note, have noted in iOS 7 is that the icons are not just rounded uh rounded squares. They actually have uh, this little uh, bowing around the, uh, the edges as well as the corners. So to do this... Now when you say bowing, you're referring to the shape and not the plane, right? Uh, that's correct, but both are aerodynamic. If you look here though, they're, they're actually combining two different shapes to make this happen. So they're, um, they're overlapping uh, kind of a square shape here. They're rounding the corners off and then they're adding the circular shape to make it uh, come out on the edges, just like that. Uh, in this walkthrough, you can actually play the code back. That's pretty cool. Or you can just go ahead and view the code to see how it works. As you can see here, we have uh, some anchor elements along uh, some elements inside, and they're styling those um, actually using pseudo elements here. So you have the icon inside, and then there's the anchor, and then the anchor has the before and after pseudo elements applied. And they are transforming those, they are clipping them, oops, excuse me, and they are also rounding them using the border radius property. So pretty cool. Uh, definitely check that out if you want to emulate the look of the icons in iOS 7 using CSS3. Squirkles. Next up, we have a project called Happy Rhino, which lets you build large client-side applications in a structured way. This is a pretty interesting project. It's kind of similar to Backbone.js in its format and what it allows you to do. Um, not quite as uh, heavy or feature-rich, but let's check it out a little bit on here. There's, as you can see, already a few sites using happyrhino.js. Um, this is installed using NPM, and it gives you just a really nice structure for building these bigger client-side applications. Client-side applications are getting larger and larger as you know we go on, and they do more and more things. So it gives you kind of everything you would expect. Gives you a way to create classes, uh, do different templating, gives you models, collections, and even a router. So tons of different stuff here. Not really anything that we can go in depth on on the show, but I really recommend checking this out. It's an interesting take on the whole client-side um, JavaScript library thing, uh, but it looks pretty neat. Pretty cool. Well, next up, we have uh, a really cool project called FullScreenMario.com. It's basically Super Mario Brothers implemented in HTML5 in the browser. And I, I would like to, to note that we were um, strong-armed on Twitter into covering this. Somebody said that they would no longer tune in if we didn't cover this, so 
Here you go. This is just you, for you. You win. Uh, so it's it's exactly what you'd expect. You can go ahead and uh, and move Mario around here. You can go ahead and jump and oh look at that. We're gonna get this uh, this mushroom here. You can take the warp zone. There we go. No, nah, no, nah, I, I like to take the the scenic route. But uh, anyway, it it works uh, just like the real game. It's it's pretty cool. And the um, thing that's really cool about it though is that it's all open source on GitHub. Now, there's a couple things I'd like to point out first. Um, you can go ahead and use their level editor here, like this. You can actually make your own levels. So if you don't want to jump into the code or anything, <clears throat> you can just go ahead and plan out a couple levels here. That's you can awesome. Drop in, uh, drop in some pipes like that. I'm probably doing this wrong, but you get the idea. Pretty cool stuff. Now on GitHub, like I said, this is all open source. You can go ahead and look at all of the code that was used to put this together. And they also tell you a couple things about how to do uh, power-ups, how to add things into the world, how to shift maps, and, and so on. Now, I think this is really a, a pretty amazing project because it is open source. Um, that means that you can go ahead and fork the project on GitHub and maybe go ahead and make your own original games out of it. You know, all the code is there that you would need to make a basic platformer game. You could replace the, the art assets. You could add your own music. You could um, replace Mario and Luigi with Nick and Jason. Yeah, I mean, if somebody would like to do that, uh, we would most definitely feature it on the show. So please well, make that happen yeah. for us, please. What more can you ask for? Yeah. Next up, we have a project called Polymer. Polymer is touted as a new type of library for the web built on top of web components and designed to leverage the evolving web platform on modern browsers. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so what does all that mean? Well... Just basically means the internet. Yeah, the internet. Yeah. No, so what it does, you and I talk a lot about the different HTML5 features and even things that are up and coming in HTML5, but you can't always use that with older browsers, you know, because some of that stuff is really cutting edge. So what Polymer does is gives you a set of polyfills to use all these things with older browsers and legacy browsers, which is wonderful because you won't have to update your code so much as these features are more and more widespread and able to be used. And the really cool thing about this is that as the browsers start to support this stuff, it will use the native feature for them instead of using the polyfill. Yeah. Now, um, they do say on the site that it's a little bit early, uh, not quite ready for production use yet, but I do recommend following along with it. Now, um, it, it's really cool, you know, easy to download, kind of shows you an architectural diagram, who cares, don't understand it, whatever. Um, but it's very, very easy to download and get started. Look at that, download the zip, uh, install, uh, and, and boom, that's it, test your environment. Uh, anyway, very, very easy to get started as well. You, uh, all you need to do, include the Polymer script, and that's it, look at that, created your own component right there. So they've got just a, a ton of different options. We've covered a lot of the things here on the show before, things like using the Shadow DOM, HTML templating, different things like that. Now this is a library that will let you actually be able to use them. So definitely something to keep in mind. Very cool stuff. Yeah, so I think that's about all we got for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at NickRP. And I am at JCypher. For more information on anything we talked about today, make sure to check out the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us search for us on iTunes at The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile development, business, design, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. It's cool how we didn't say anything about the faux hawk.